let's get started now with square roots. Now, remember the process of squaring is multiplying a number by itself. So if we have 4 times 4, that's 16. And we have four things making a square, four boxes by four boxes. And if we have something that's one foot by one foot, we have one square foot or one foot squared. And one times one is one squared. And one squared equals one. One times one is one. If we have two by two, we have four square feet or four feet squared. Two times two is two squared. That's equal to four. So two squared equals four. And we have a similar process for three squared. Three feet by three feet is nine square feet. Three times three is three squared. Just using the same notation, that's equal to nine. Three squared equals nine. So the inverse operation of squaring, suppose we have the square to start with and we want to go the other way then that would be the inverse operation, and that's called the square root. So in this case, the square root of 9 is 3. Anyway, the square root's a number when multiplied by itself gives you the number you started with. That's the square root. So for example, here we go again, the square root of 9 is equal to 3. And it's the inverse operation. So 9 is the square, and then 3 is the square root of that. So let's take a square root. And this is how we would write it mathematically. The square root of 9 is 3, and that's what we would say. Let's look now at some of the terminology that goes along with this operation. So we have that funny little um, I don't know what you call it, box with a hook on it, that's the radical sign. Looks sort of like a division sign with an extra little thingy on it. That's the radical sign. The number that you take the, uh, the square root of is called the radicand, and the result itself is the square root. And we say when we have this type of um, symbolism that the square root of 9 is 3. Now, a perfect square is something that gives you an even square root. For example, if you have nine things, the square root of that is three, and it fits exactly because it has a whole number for its square root. Now, suppose we wanted to find the square root of 10. There's three by three, but that's nine. So we'd have to add a little bit to it. So what we can say is that 10 is not a perfect square because it's square root, whatever it is, and we need to express it probably as a decimal, which we'll get to way down the line, is not an exact, not a whole number. So a perfect square is a number. When you take the square root, you get a whole number. It fits perfectly. So here are some numbers, the roots, and their squares. And then you can see that the square root is the inverse operation. So for example here, 5 squared is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. And 25 is a perfect square because it has 5, its even number, as a square root. And the way to think about these things is geometrically. These are all quantities that are perfect squares because if you make squares, they align into exact squares. So if I have four things two by two, that's a perfect square because its square root is two. And when you look at it geometrically, it indeed looks like a perfect square. It's not a rectangle or some odd shape. And all of the blocks fit exactly. So one, four, nine, 16, 25 are all perfect squares. And then their sides, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, are the square roots of those perfect squares. So when you take an, uh, the square root of a number, what you're asking is, what number times itself 
equals the number that you started with. In other words, you have a number that you're thinking about, 16, for example, that's one I can do in my head, and I think to myself, now, what must I multiply by itself to get 16? And for example, let's work on the square root of 121. And so I ask myself, what number must I multiply by itself to give me 121? And so, gosh, I don't know that exactly, so I need to fool around, or I need to sneak up on it somehow. How can I do it? Well, I tr try to think of numbers I know that are in the ballpark and see if I can fit it between two to guess. So, for example, I would try to estimate it here by saying, all right, what's 10 times 10? That's 100. So I know that whatever the number times itself is to be 121, it's got to be bigger than 10. Well, what else can I do easily? 20 times 20 is 400, that's too much, so it's got to be less than 20. So I, right now, just by doing the estimate this way, I've managed to at least box in what my guesses are. So I wouldn't guess 325, for example. I know that it's going to be somewhere between 10 and 20, and since it looks like it's closer to 100 than 400, let me guess, say, 12. And, you know, I happen to know that's 144 because, you know, I bought 12 by 12 things, a gross. So let me guess 11. And sure enough, the square root of 11 is 121. Here's one that's a little bit harder. So I now need to ask myself, what number times itself equals 3,136? This one's going to be a little rougher, but again, let me try doing some estimates. 50 times 50 is 2,500. Okay, well, it's, that's too little. 60 times 60 is 3,600. So here I can start guessing. It looks like my number is closer to 60 than to 50. So let me start guessing. Well, let me do 56. And sure enough, 56 times 56, if I were to multiply this out, gives me 3,136. So the question is, can we develop some kind of a rule to help us find these square roots? Let's look. Well, first of all, to find the square root of a number that's a perfect square, what we need to do is look at things that are a little easier. Find the square root of a higher perfect square, find the square root of a lower one, in other words, box it in, and then make some kind of a guess for the actual square root. And then, of course, what you're going to need to do is try it. And if it's too big, make the number smaller. If it's too small, make the number bigger. And here's where you get to practice your multiplication skills. See, all this builds one thing on another. Anyway, let's take a quiz. You can follow along with me here on whether or not these numbers are a perfect squares. If it is a perfect square, the number will turn green after I trigger it. If it's not a perfect square, it turns blue. Let's try it. Is 11 a perfect square? Well, it turned blue. I guess it's not. What times itself is 11? I can't think of anything. Is 69 a perfect square? What times what is 69? There's no whole number that will do it. What about 64? Yes, it is. 8 times 8 is 64. 25? Turn green. 5 times 5? 10. No. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. 10 is not among our perfect squares. 144. We talked about this earlier. That is 12 times 12. Four, that's an easy one. Two times two, here's one that's a little harder. You might not have run into this, but you see it quite a bit. 625, that is a perfect square. It turns out it's 25 times 25. What about 1,000? What times itself is 1,000? Not a whole number, 
So 1,000 is not a perfect square. And 100, what times itself is 100? 10 times 10, so that is a perfect square. Were you able to follow along with me?